Hey everybody. I don't know if you can hear me. Hey everybody. All right, I'm going to mute my computer. <laughs> this is exciting. Hey, welcome to Quiz for Our Cause. Uh, we are raising money for direct relief, asking questions about our favorite show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, my producer BJ is right next to me. <laughs> His hand is here. Uh, and he's going to try to keep up with any technical issues we might have along the way. Um, but just bear with us. This is our first time doing it, so there might be a couple little hiccups, but I think we got this on the lock. Um, there's going to be five rounds, five questions each. The answer sheets came in your email. They're also at the bottom of the um, Twitch stream right underneath the video, and I'll be putting them in the Twitch chat room uh, in one of these directions <laughs> um, for each round. Uh, also, Buffy Summers 99 uh, has offered to post those as well, so there's any questions there yes uh, on your round one answer sheet it'll have a line for your team name it'll have a line for an email address oh my blue screen went crazy uh, it'll have uh, a line for each member of your team so each member of your team should have a ticket that they bought on Eventbrite because the money goes to direct relief and you know it's charity uh, and let there be light and uh, yeah so that's what's going on um, do not type the answers in the chat bar uh, for the twitch stream that is not cool uh, put them only on the answer sheet does everyone have a round one answer sheet I can't hear you <laughs> uh, okay so uh, the other thing is uh, let, 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 let me, Everyone should have a ticket. Answer sheets are in the chat. Um, don't cheat. This is a cheatable quiz. <laughs> so if you wanted to be a dick, you could cheat and look up the answers. But that would be a really dick move. And we've worked very hard on getting all these people and all these questions written. I wrote them all myself. Um, so yeah. Also, uh, so for Direct Relief, the, uh, the website is directrelief.org. We'll be hearing a little bit about them at the end of this round. Um, they're an amazing organization. They're out on the field. They're, they're providing PPE to hospitals. They're helping people during the COVID-19 craziness. Um, your tickets were $5. We're so happy to have the $5. After we give Eventbrite their, uh, their what's, it, what's it, piece of flesh, cut of flesh? After we give them their cut of flesh, uh, they get $1.90 less. So they get three ten dollars per ticket. So it's... You know, substantial money, but it would be great if you would go to their website and give them a little bit more jingle and tell them that Buffy sent you there. Um, I'm not currently reading the chat, so if you're saying anything to me or making fun of the fact that my shoulder is disappearing, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> uh, okay, I think we're just about ready to start. What you got for me? Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Quiz for a Cause. I'm Christine Sutherland, and I play Buffy's mom, Joyce, on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So um, I'm so happy to be here um, and see you all, even if it's only virtually, and raise money for directrelief.org, their COVID-19 fund. So that was Christine Sutherland. Uh, Buffy's mom, one of my favorite characters on the show. Uh, again, I don't do this professionally. I don't stream professionally. I'm just a fan. Uh, so bear with me. I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, there's my camera. It's not here. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Round one. Again, on your answer sheets, put your team name, your email address, and the names of each person on your team. Each person should have a ticket. Okay. Round one, question one. Ah. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's that first thing. Hello. My name is Anthony Stewart Head, and I was in a great TV show called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes. Um, my character was Child. Uh, and just quickly as a side note, um, I'm very proud that I introduced two words into the American language uh, because um, Fox at the time had a, 
a swearing police. I don't know what they were called, but anyway, they used to look through the script and um, edit out anything that was questionable. Uh, but because at the time we weren't online wasn't really a thing, uh, there were two words um, that I introduced that they had no idea what they were. One was bollocks, uh, which later was written for Spike as bollocks, um, and pillock. Very, very proud, <laughs> proud of the fact that I introduced um, those words. Strange thing to be proud of, really. Anyway, my questions are. Uh, my character Giles had a lot in common with his chart. Uh, we were both told at a young age that our destiny was to avert the apocalypse and fight the forces of darkness. While Buffy's battles were of a supernatural variety, yes, we all know that, Giles's biggest challenges typically involved the bureaucracy of the Watchers' Council. Bunch of pillocks. Um, and especially disagreements with the council director, the biggest pillock, pillock of all, played by Harris Eulin, not a pillock at all. A wonderful, wonderful actor, a lovely man. Um, I don't know if you saw him in the first two seasons of Ozark, but just if you haven't, check it out, amazing. And also you'll notice that I've, um, I've modeled myself on his um, later appearances in Buffy. Anyway, what was the council director's first and last name? Hmm. All right, so Giles has a lot in common with his charge. They were both told at a young age that their destiny was to avert the apocalypse and fight the forces of darkness. While Buffy's battles were of the supernatural variety, Giles' biggest challenges presented themselves in the bureaucracy of the Watchers' Council and the director of the council, this man, played by Harris Yulin. Put that on your answer sheet. Not in the chat, please. One moment. Okay. Uh, question two comes from Amber Benson, who played Tara on the show. Any Tara fans? I'm sure there are. Here we go. The final straw in Willow and Tara's breakup in season six is when Willow casts a spell to delete Tara's memory of an argument. What is the name of the magical flower Willow uses for this spell? The final straw in Willow and Tara's breakup is when Willow cast a spell to delete her memory after an argument. What is the name of the magical flower that Willow uses for this spell? Again, we'll repeat all these questions after we finish the round. Uh, so we'll repeat them. You'll have another chance to hear them. So here we go. Let's, uh, question number three is, I don't remember who did it. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, Robin Riker, who played Catherine Madison in the episode The Witch, one of my favorite episodes, has a question for us. My character, Catherine Madison, was an incredibly powerful witch who got trapped inside a cheerleading trophy that bears her name. In an episode in season two, which character stares at the trophy and remarks that its eyes follow you wherever you go? All right. Catherine Madison was an incredibly powerful witch who gets trapped in a cheerleading trophy that bears her name. In a season two episode, which character stares at that statue, commenting that its eyes follow you wherever you go? He, that character doesn't say it like that. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's uh, Robin Riker. I love her. She was on our podcast on Gerarg Cast. She's great. Um, just so you know, we will repeat these questions again. I don't care about spelling as long as it's close-ish to the correct answer. We'll take you. Uh, and yeah, have fun. 
Our next question, question four, comes from one of the writers of the show, Jane Espenson, uh, my favorite writer of the show. She wrote Superstar and Showtime and all the great nerdy question or nerdy episodes. Here we go. Some jokes find their way into more than one episode. For example, when Anya is explaining alternate universes in the episode Triangle, she mentions one without this animal. A joke first mentioned in Superstar. Some of our jokes find their way into multiple episodes. In Triangle, when Anya is explaining alternate universes, she mentions the possibility of one without what animal? A joke they first used on Superstar. <laughs> All right, number five. Uh, is a one from Christine Sutherland who did our intro. Uh, she's here to talk about Parent Teacher Night. When Joyce attends the Parent Teacher Night at Sunnydale High, the school is taken over by vampires. Now, which weapon does Joyce use to protect Buffy? When Joyce attends Parent Teacher Night at Sunnydale High, the school is overtaken by vampires. Joyce protects Buffy by attacking Spike with what weapon? That was question five. We're going to read all these back now so that you can do it again with no um, video, just the text. Uh, so let's start with question one. And again, don't cheat. <laughs> and you can put them uh, in the answer sheet, not on the chat. Uh, Giles has a lot in common with this question one. Giles has a lot in common with his charge. They were both told at a young age that their destiny was to avert the apocalypse and fight the forces of darkness. While Buffy's battles were of the supernatural variety, Giles' biggest challenges presented themselves in the bureaucracy of the Watcher's Council and the director of the council, this man played by Harris Yulin. Question 2. The final straw in Willow and Tara's breakup is when Willow cast a spell to delete her memory after an argument. What is the name of the magical flower Willow uses for this spell? Question 3. My character Catherine Madison was an incredible... Not my character, Robin's character. Catherine Madison was an incredibly powerful witch who gets trapped in a cheerleading trophy that bears her name. In a season two episode, what character stares at the statue, commenting that its eyes follow you wherever you go? Question four. Some of the jokes find their way into multiple episodes. In Triangle, when Anya is explaining alternate universes, she mentions the possibility of one without what animal, a joke they first used on Superstar. And question five. When Joyce attends parent-teacher night at Sunnydale High, the school is overtaken by vampires. Joyce protects Buffy by attacking Spike with what weapon? All right, so I'll give you guys some time to answer those questions and I will copy and paste them into the uh, chat on Twitch as well. Um, in the meanwhile, we're gonna watch a video about direct relief. you are trusted by direct relief, you're going to have a, a, a partner you can't get anywhere else. So just here in Los Angeles, we have sort of three different areas we're supporting. One is these drive-through testing facilities. There's nine across the city. We're supplying all the PPE for the workers, gloves, gowns, and masks. The other is the federally qualified health centers and, and clinics that are the front line of the health system for people. And the third is we're supporting hospitals in Los Angeles, UCLA, Cedar sinai USC, and others who have reached out to Direct Relief because they were lacking protective gear for their hospital staff. This is one of nine drive-through testing facilities that the city of Los Angeles is running through Mayor Garcetti and the LA Fire Department. They're apparently getting about 3,000 people per day right now across their sites, and we're working with a longtime partner called CORE. 
Corps' principal mission right now is to relieve these high skill set firefighters from the task of operating test sites. We're prepared for earthquakes, brush fires, high rise fires, civil unrest, everything you can think of. But I never thought we'd be challenged with this uh, today. So it truly takes a partnership with CORE and uh, the direct relief organization to combine our resources to protect the people of this city and this county and the state. And I'm very proud of the work of our firefighters and I'm very proud of our relationship with these organizations because it allows us to pull back from the test sites and get on and staff ambulances and fire trucks. Uh, so I want to say thank you to the core organization, to the direct relief organization. It takes all of us, we're all in this together. All right, we've got a bunch of answers in. Um, what do, should we close off the answers? I'm going to close off the answers. Okay. Give you a minute. We're going to close off the answers so you cannot submit anymore. I hope everybody got their answers in because we're closing this sheet. We have 322 and responses and we are closed. 325. <laughs> two got in right under the wire. All right. Well, uh, we have some teams submitting. Let's reopen it for a couple seconds. Okay. And I'll chat with the lovely people in this room. Uh, I'm curious where everyone's from. Is there anyone who is from, like, further than the UK? Do we have any players from Germany or Guam or Guyana or some other G country? <laughs> Las Vegas. Hey, we're in Vegas. Portland, New Hampshire, Eugene. Denmark. I'm half Danish. Yeah, Germany, Austria. South Africa. Holy hell, Wisconsin. All right, I hope everyone has their questions in because there's four million people telling me where they're from. That person says they're from Sunnydale. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> You're one-eighth Danish. Cool. Hi, Shay. I know Shay. She lives in Vegas, too. Reno. Sorry. That wasn't nice. <laughs> All right. All right. We're closed. It's done. We got 332 responses. We are going to be grading papers all <laughs> night. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, are we ready for the answers? Yes. Let's do the answers from round one. All right. Here we go. Uh, the flower that Willow uses to erase Tara's memory is Leith's Bramble. Uh, the head of the Watchers Council is Quentin Travers. Uh, the character that looks into the eyes of the statues and sees them going like this. Uh, they are right. One and two are flipped on this. Oh. Sorry. We flipped those questions. Number one is Quentin oh, Travers. No, Number two is Liz Bramble. Number three, Oz is the one that saw the eyes track. Yeah, I know. I got it. Uh, Anya talks about a universe with no shrimp or with nothing but shrimp, and it comes back uh, to play later. And Joyce hits Spike with an axe. Tabula Rasa is the name of the next episode after we find out the name of that flower person commenting. All right, <laughs> let's jump to round two. Sorry, guys, I'm such a nerd. This is just like a nerd thing for me, so I'm just going to talk sometimes. Round two. Here we go. Oh, wait. Round two, question one, uh, was sent to us by Tom Lank, who played Andrew, one of my favorite characters on the show. And here he goes. Hey, everybody. It is me, Tom Lank. I played the role of Andrew on the show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, one of the most adored characters on the show. Probably the greatest. Even greater than Jonathan, let's say. Um... I have some questions I'm gonna ask you. Hopefully you have the answer to them. If you don't, that's not my concern, okay? I'm just here to ask the hard questions. Though my character apparently went to high school with the Scooby gang, even though no one remembers him. Um, he crashed the school performance of Romeo and Juliet. I think that's wrong. This I have questions about this question. I think 
he crashed the prom. I don't, I, but I'm not sure. Which mischievous creatures did Andrew summon to crash the play and or the prom? I, I don't, I leave it up to you. Uh, it's, a, it's a flexible question. Okay. Hey, everybody, oh, it is me, watching Tom Lang. Oh. <laughs> uh, though Andrew apparently went to high school with the Scoobies, nobody remembers him, even though he crashed the school play Romeo and Juliet by summing what mischievous creatures? Of course, he did not summon them to the prom. He is wrong, and I am right. <laughs> he was only on the show. I watched it. I know it wasn't Andrew. That's what I just said. <laughs> All right. Round two. Uh, round two. Question two. Uh, it's another one from Christine Sutherland. Uh, when the police show up at the Sumner's house and tell Joyce that Buffy is a suspect in a murder, Buffy lies to her mother. Now, how does Buffy claim that she knows Spike? When the police show up to the Summer's house and tell Joyce that Buffy is a suspect in a murder, Buffy lies to her mother. How does Buffy claim that she knows Spike? How does Buffy claim that she knows Spike? I always wanted to do that. All right. <laughs> Question three. Uh, who's this from? Oh, it's from Danny Strong, my actual favorite character on the show, Jonathan. Here he goes. In season four, the episode Superstar, when Jonathan casts a spell that he is the most popular guy in the world, he sang a song at the bronze. What was the name of that song? And who was the actor who really sang the song? Because sadly, I cannot sing in real life. Superstar sees Jonathan cast a spell on Sunnydale, making him the most popular guy in town. What song does he sing at the Bronx? Bronx? Bronze? And for bonus... <laughs> fuck. And for bonus points, who was the singing voice of Jonathan? I love this episode. This might be my favorite episode of the whole series. Uh, yeah, we're going to put the questions in the chat again shortly. Um... I did not write that question, by the way. That's one that Danny wrote for himself. So, that's pretty cool. All right. Round two. Question four. Oh, this is a submission from Andrew Furchlin, who played the Anointed One in the first two seasons and was on my podcast and is super cool. Here we go. My character, the Anointed One, was destined to lead Buffy Summers to hell. One of the lessons the master teaches me is how to control my fears. He does this by doing what act that is known to be hazardous to vampires? My character, his character, the anointed one was destined to lead Buffy Summers to hell. One of the lessons the master teaches him is to control his fears. He does this by doing what act known to be hazardous to vampires? All right. Uh, round five is from Christos. I'm sorry, round five. Question five is from Christos Gage. Christos wrote the seasons 10, 11, and 12 comic books, but you don't have to have read them to get this question. Here we go. What is up, party people? My name is Christos Gage, and here is a question that even I don't know the answer to. Uh, let's see here. In the Buffy season 10 comics, which I wrote, co some co-written with Nicholas Brennan, the lovely and talented. Uh, we meet the demon that created the master and is therefore indirectly responsible for the vamping of Angel, Darla, Spike, Drusilla, and theoretically thousands of other vampires. What is the process of turning a human into a vampire called in the canon of the series? Like I said, I have no idea. Uh, so good luck with that one. Thank you very much. That was Christos. And in the Buffy season 10 comics that he co-wrote with Nicholas Brendan, we meet the demon that created the master and is thus indirectly responsible for the vamping of Angel, Darla, Spike, Drusilla, and theoretically thousands of other vampires. 
What is the process of turning someone into a vampire called in the canon of the series? I'm going to post it in the chat as well because I know his video wasn't very loud. Okay, hold on. I'm putting these questions into the chat. Please don't cheat. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give you a little time to answer those. All the questions are in the chat. The questions are not about the comics. There's also no questions about Angel. Well, maybe one. Uh, so we're going to watch a video from Jasco, who has actually sponsored us and given us a lot of prizes and things. And now I'm blue. <laughs> and now I'm invisible. <laughs> and now I'm blue. No, now I'm normal. All right. Uh, so we're going to watch a video from Jasco Games. Here we go. Submit your answer sheets. Hey everybody, this is MJ, Editor-in-Chief and Public Relations Dude for Jasco Games, maker of such fine, fine games as the Universe's Collectible Card Game and the Buffy the Vampire Slayer board game. Jasco Games is so excited to be sponsoring the Buffy Trivia for a Cause online charity quiz show for the benefit of direct relief. Now, prizes from Jasco Games will include 12 Buffy board games aforementioned to be awarded to winners, 12 limited edition Buffy the Vampire Slayer reflective foil posters up for grabs to the lucky winners of our contest within a contest. Just drop by our Facebook page at Jasco Games, J-A-S-C-O, and like or follow us because we will be randomly selecting names among site visitors until the end of the quiz show. And hey, speaking of shiny things, you should definitely check out our Buffy foil puzzles at jascogames.net slash puzzles. Three different selections, one of which is limited to only 999 ever, and stamped with its own unique collector number in its first ever built-in frame. That's right. We've <coughs> okay, so we invented a ready-made frame in which to display your one-of-a-kind Buffy puzzle, stamped with a number that no one else on earth is ever going to have. So thank you so much for joining us in this fantastic charity benefit, and wear your masks, stay safe, and keep others safe as well. Be blessed. All right, you can kill his video. So Jasco has donated a bunch of these Buffy the Vampire Slayer board games. And I am not good at board games. And uh, I have not figured out how to play it, but I also haven't tried very much because the artwork is fantastic. I'm gonna show you a little bit while you guys take your time sending in your answer sheets. Look at this Giles. Look at him. He looks like Giles. Uh, there's the angel card in the back of that. I can't see myself anymore. There's Buffy. Sarah is there. We have James. We have Willow. Uh, there's also an expansion pack that has Faith and others in it. <laughs> you know, Faith and others. Uh, so we're, we're uh, giving away a bunch of these as prizes for our top scoring teams or players here it is again okay uh and we have a bunch of other sponsors sending stuff so the prize packages will go out within the next couple weeks to our winning teams or players uh yes you can buy the board game on amazon okay let's cut the uh let's cut the answers only 292 this time people are dropping out this is your, I'm going to give you a count of five, four, three, two, close it. Oh, it's 313. In. Oh, they're flying in. Never mind. Uh, three, now we'll count to five, <laughs> two, three, four, and it's closed. That's it. For real this time. Okay. We have 325 submissions. Someone got in as he clicked the button. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, the answer is for round two. Thank you. Here we go. Uh, Andrew summons flying monkeys to attack the school play. Uh, Buffy tells her mother that her and Spike are in a band together. The song that plays at the bronze is Serenade in Blue. And Brad Kane, who actually plays Andrew's brother Tucker, is the singing voice of Jonathan. And uh, he's also the singing voice of Aladdin. 
Uh, the master shows the anointed one that he should face his fears by grabbing a crucifix and his hand is all on fire. And uh, to make someone a vampire in the lore of the show is to sire them. So we're coming along pretty, pretty well. Round three it is. Round three. Okay. Uh, everyone has a round three answer sheet, right? Okay, good enough. I may have another wrong team name for round one. And we'll figure it out. A round three. Oh, BJ didn't do a round three card. So just pretend this says round three on this black text here. Here we go. Round three, question one, is from Yari Limon, who played Kennedy in season seven of Buffy. Not a well-liked character, but I don't think that's fair. Let's hear her question. Hey guys, Yari Limon here, AKA Kennedy. I'm gonna read you Quivia. Quivia, I'm gonna read you Quivia. I'm gonna read you trivia question number one from me. Okay, here we go. After the collapse of the Hellmouth, Andrew visits Los Angeles and tells Angel that Willow and Kennedy are living together in what South American country? For bonus points, what is the name? <clears throat> I just can't talk. What is the name of the city they are based in? After the collapse of the Hellmouth, Andrew visits Los Angeles and tells Angel that Willow and Kennedy are living together in what South American country? For bonus points, what is the name of the city they are based in? That's a bit of a hard one. That's the one you had to see Angel to get. Yes, it's technically an Angel question. There's one. <laughs> All right. Question two. Uh, oh, uh, question two is from Amber Benson again, who played Tara. Here we go. Willow and Tara very quickly become girlfriends and move in together. Part of their domestic bliss includes getting a kitten. What is the name of Willow and Tara's new pet? Willow and Tara very quickly become girlfriends and move in together. Part of their domestic bliss includes getting a kitten. What is the name of Willow and Tara's new pet? I need the name of the cat. All right, question three is coming from Adam Bush, who played uh, Warren. And I know it's a little cruel to put a Warren question right after a Tara question. I didn't think that out, but here we go. Hello, my name is Adam Bush, and I played Warren Mears on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, among other things, Warren was a sexist, a chauvinist, an incel, and a killer. I'm willing to also venture that he was pretty depressed. A wise man once said to me that depression was not seeing options for yourself. And I think when it came to love, Warren did not see many options for himself. So he built an option. He built a robot that was designed to love only him. And like most things, Warren was wildly misguided about how that would turn out. What was the name of the robot that he built? Warren builds a dream woman programmed only to love and obey him. But then he gets bored with her and ditches her to let her batteries run out. What is the name of his robot girlfriend? BJ doesn't know. <laughs> Alright. Question four is another one from Danny Strong, who played Jonathan. In the final season of Buffy, Jonathan gets a redemption arc in the series. And for that arc, he is murdered by his friend, Andrew. Now... What was the name of the seal that his blood opened after he was killed? Jonathan gets something of a redemption arc in the final season, but is ultimately sacrificed by Andrew. What mystical seal was Jonathan's blood used to open? Funny little story here. My uh, producer BJ thought this question was about the singer seal, because the question is just labeled seal. <laughs> Yeah, or the, or the animal. It's like the difference between a seal and an elephant seal. It's a cabin in the woods reference for you kids. All right. Uh, oh, okay. So question five is another question from Anthony Stewart Head. Uh, and it's a bit of a long one because he tells a really fun story. And I'm not going to interrupt him. So deal with it. A new man in which Giles... I enjoyed it anyway, I had great fun. 
anyway, uh, he was transformed into a demon uh, by the duplicitous Ethan Rain. Um, marks the end of the road for my character's beloved 1963 Citroen DS. Um, the reason it basically marked the end of it was because the car was on its last legs or on its last wheel. Um, the whole thing, it was a very interesting car, amazing, but it was based on a sort of pneumatic system and it had to work for everything to work, especially the brakes. Uh, and there was a point um, when I had to drive towards the bronze in a panic. Uh, and I think at that point, even, I think they had to push it. I, anyway, I can't remember because the car, <laughs> the car falling, was falling apart. Um, and the brakes failed. So I was pumping the brakes. Um, and uh, I was trundling towards Cordelia, played by Charisma. Um, and thankfully, it went up a slope, so therefore it just it stopped. But it could have been unpleasant. Um, anyway, duh, what is the make of the car it's replaced with, which Buffy refers to as a little two-door trap? Hmm. So now I remember, just for your information, the first take was when the engine was running and that's when I nearly ran into Charisma. From that moment on, they decided not to run the engine and basically they would push it. But it was quite difficult to make it look as if the car was running at any kind of speed. So the, the whole transport team was pushing because it was quite a heavy car, especially with everything failing. Um, so anyway, I hope you are having a fabulous Buffet quiz, and uh, I hope you enjoyed my questions. Take care. Have a good one. All right. In The New Man, in which Giles is transformed into a demon by the duplicitous Ethan Rain, it marks the end of the road for his beloved 1963 Citroen DS. What is the make of the car he replaces it with, which Buffy calls a little two door tramp? I just need the make of the car. And yes, it is hard. This is a hard one. All right. So we're going to read through the questions one more time. And they're all in the chat as well. So you can check the chat uh, for each one. Just look for the little crown next to the name. All right. Round three, question one. After the collapse of the Hellmouth, Andrew visits Los Angeles and tells Angel that Willow and Kennedy are living together in what South American country? For bonus points, what is the name of the city they are based in? Number two. Willow and Tara very quickly become girlfriends and move in together. Part of their domestic bliss includes getting a kitten. What is the name of Willow and Tara's new pet? Number three. Warren builds a dream woman programmed only to love and obey him, but then gets bored with her and ditches her to let her batteries run out. What was the name of his robot girlfriend? I like that episode. Jonathan gets something of, oh, this is number four, sorry. Jonathan gets something of a redemption arc in the final season, but is ultimately sacrificed by Andrew. What mystical seal was Jonathan's blood used to open? And five. In The New Man, in which Giles is transformed into a demon by the duplicitous Ethan Rain, it marks the end of the road for his beloved 1963 Citroen DS. What is the make of the car he replaces it with, which Buffy calls a little two-door tramp? And those are the questions. Uh, we're going to show a little video now telling you about my podcast, because shameless plugs are how I roll. Uh, hit it. Gerardcast is the new Buffy-themed web show for Slayer aficionados and virgins alike. That's right. We are live every Monday, Thursday, and Sunday at 3 p.m., reviewing two episodes per show with no upcoming spoilers because, sorry, some of us have never seen Buffy. And some of us know the exact spell to turn ourselves into a rat. Special guests. So far, have included Robin Riker, Nicholas Brendan, and Andrew Furchland. With many more to come. Catch us at facebook.com slash girlrcast and coming to podcast sites near you very soon. We will also be revealing the winning scores for today's trivia first on a special broadcast of the show tomorrow at noon. 
So make sure you watch tomorrow at noon. And uh, that's all we got. Grr. 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 I'm getting good at that. Wow, I hate hearing myself. Uh, so that is going to be the uh, where we're going to reveal the winners tomorrow is going to be on our podcast. But I'm also going to send an email out to everyone who bought tickets that will also have that as well. So you don't have to watch my podcast. But if you want to, it's facebook.com slash gerargcast, G-R-R-A-R-G-H. C-A-S-T. I hope there's a prize for best team name. You bet there is. You're getting one of these board games. I have 12 of them. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, we have 305 answers in, so we're just going to do like a countdown from 10 to get everyone in. We're going to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1 and a half. Nope, that's the other direction. <laughs> A half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second, a sixty-fourth, a one hundred and twenty-eighth. Uh, let's close it. That's it. I hope everybody's in. All right. Now we're going to... I don't even know what round we're on. Round four? Round three? Okay. So we're doing round four. Will you open round four? This is round three. There we go. There we go. All right. Uh, again, this is, uh, oh, I didn't do the answers from round three. Sorry. All right. Answers from round three. I'm so glad I'm looking at this. All right. Uh, Willow and Kennedy are off hiding in Brazil in the city of Sao Paulo. Uh, in the episode, she says, uh, I'm sorry, Andrew says, they are based in Sao Paulo, but every time I talk to them, they're in Rio. But I asked where they were based. So Sao Paulo. Uh, question two, Miss Kitty Fantastico is the name of the cat <coughs> of Willow and Tara. Uh, the, the robot that Warren builds for banging and uh, making me cry on a swing set is April. Uh, the seal that Jonathan's blood is used to open is the seal of Danthalzar. Uh, and the make of the car is the BMW. It's a little BMW something something two door convertible thing. All right, round four. <laughs> do, do, do. Round four. Okay. Um, I don't know what this one is. Oh, that's I used the wrong name. It's oh. not. It's you know another name. Hold on. Like <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> a little, little, little. Okay, I got it. It's Drew Greenberg. <laughs> okay. Goldberg. Right. <laughs> Hero Goldberg. I was like, whoopee, did this. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so round four, question one, is a question from uh, Drew, Drew Z. Greenberg. He's one of the writers of the show. He wrote a lot of season six and seven episodes. And uh, he didn't send a video, so it's just his audio with his picture. But he's cute. Hit it. My first writing credit on Buffy was in the season six episode, Smashed. In that episode, Amy becomes human again after three years as a rat. Amy says that she's hoping somebody will ask her to prom. Who? Uh, his first writing credit on the show is in Smashed, an episode where Amy is turned back into human three years after she turned herself. Who does she say she wanted to take her to the prom? Do not put the answers in the chat. All right. Hold on one second. I'm going to make sure. I'm just giving you guys the questions in the chat as well. Okay. Round four, question two, comes from Nicholas Brendan, uh, who played Xander. We did spell it wrong on the Denzel Thar thing, but it's okay. Just ignore it. Uh, SP June Girl, someone will send you an answer sheet. All right. Jesus. Okay, here we go. She is the one. She's such wonderful fun, such passion and grace. Warm in the night when I'm right in her tight embrace, tight embrace. And once more it's feeling, what breakfast food does Xander offer to cook Anya before their duet starts? I'm not going to sing that. Uh, and once more with feeling, what breakfast food does Xander offer to cook Anya before their duet starts? And once more with feeling, 
what breakfast food does Xander offer to cook Anya before their duet starts? Okay. And our next question is another one from Tom Lank. Here we go. The next question is, when Anya and Andrew stare down the uber vamps in the final battle, he tries to comfort her with three happy thoughts. One of the happy thoughts was her, her trigger, which is bunnies, adorable yet terrifying. What are the other two things that Andrew tells Anya to think of? Again, I don't know the answer to that question. I, uh, what do you think? I just sit around watching myself on old TV shows? No. You watch it once to see what your hair like looks like, and then you watch it a second time, maybe to put it on your reel, and then a third time if you really want to just torture yourself. Watch, watching yourself on TV is, it's awful. Everyone hates it. Not everyone. But it's not healthy. So I don't, I don't, I don't condone that behavior either. Uh, I'm going to shut up now. Bye. I love Tommy Lang. Uh, when Anya and Andrew stare down the Uber vamps in the final battle, he tries to comfort her with three happy thoughts, including her trigger, bunnies. What are the other two things he tells her to think of? All right. That episode makes me sad. Uh, okay, we're doing another one from Adam Bush, a very nice person who played a very mean role. <laughs> Let's hear it. Now this one's hard to say without laughing, but I'm going to try and get through it. In the episode Seeing Red, Warren obtains magical orbs that he uses to give himself strength and invulnerability. Now, how does he escape the battle with Buffy after she smashes his orbs? <laughs> In the episode Seeing Red, Warren uses magical orbs to give him strength and invulnerability. How does he escape the battle after Buffy smashes his orbs? <laughs> I like that question. All right. Uh, round five is from someone some of you may have heard. I'm sorry, round four. Fuck, I can't talk today. Round four, question five is from someone you guys may have heard of. Uh, he's created a couple of shows, uh, directed some Avengers movies, did Cabin in the Woods. We Much do We should skip this one? Nobody will know who it is? Okay, we'll skip this one. Uh, okay, 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 we'll keep it. Uh, he directed Much Ado About Nothing in his backyard. Uh, he created Dollhouse, great show. Uh, Angel, fine show. And Buffy, the best show ever made. Uh, here's a question from Joss Whedon. Though the Sunnydale Hellmouth is home to our gang of the old Scoobies, it is not the only one in the alternate universe of The Wish. The other Hellmouth that Buffy listened to was located where? All right. Though the Sunnydale Hellmouth is home to our gang of Merry Scoobies, it is not the only one. In the universe of the Wish, Buffy is sent to what other city to defeat the forces of darkness on their Hellmouth? It's so weird to see Joss reading a question that I wrote. It's like a surreal fan crying thing, goosebumps. It's not, it's, I'm not okay with it. Uh, all right. Um, so that's the Jaws question, and so get your answer. Oh yeah, we gotta do the questions again. Let's do the questions again. Sorry. Oh, I need to put that one in the chat too. Uh, hold on, I missed two, so let me put four and five in the chat. Okay, so, Joss read words you wrote. That's correct, and I'm not okay with it. <laughs> Uh, so all of the questions are there in the chat. Um, make sure you get them in on your answer sheets. We're going to read them one more time. Let's go. Uh, Drew Z. Greenberg's first writing credit on the show is in Smashed, an episode where Amy is turned back into a human three years after she turned herself. 
Who does she say she wanted to take her to prom? Question number two. Uh, blah, blah, blah. In Once More With Feeling, what breakfast food does Xander offer to cook Anya before their duet starts? Question number three. When Anya and... I don't remember who that was. Andrew. When Anna and Andrew stare down the Uber vamps in the final battle, he tries to comfort her with three happy thoughts, including her trigger, bunnies. What are the other two things he tells her to think of? Uh, question four. In the episode Seeing Red, Warren uses magical orbs to give him strength and invulnerability. How does he escape the battle after Buffy smashes his orbs? And number five. Though the Sunnydale Hellmouth is home to our gang of Merry Scoobies, it is not the only one. In the universe of The Wish, Buffy is sent to what other city to defeat the forces of darkness on their Hellmouth? So those are your questions. Okay, uh, so we'll give you a little time to get that in. In the meanwhile, I want to tell you about Slay the Stigma. Maybe. Uh, Slay the Stigma is an educational, empowering podcast that brings awareness and support to slay the stigma of your hellmouth within your Sunnydale. Do you identify with Buffy, Xander, Willow, Giles, or any of the other characters who stood up to stigma even 20 years ago? The Stigma Slayers will help empower you to stand up and speak up to your stigma vampires and personal demons while reminding you that you matter. We are more than our differences or diagnosis. You can find them at Stigma Slayers on all social media. Uh, it's run by my dear friend Sarah Allison, who I love with all my heart. Uh, Nicholas Brendan, who I also love. And someone else, I don't know who she is, but she's on the picture and I'm sure she's cool. <laughs> all right. Uh, we have 262 responses in. I'm going to give you the countdown from 10. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8 came in in the last second. And there's four more. And this is a really long one. And we're closing. <laughs> we just keep seeing the number go up because you guys aren't submitting and I feel bad cutting you off. That's it. All right. Um, I see that some people are having problems seeing the video. I'm going to post the videos on our Facebook page for Garardcast. So if you follow that, I'll put them there. And on our YouTube channel eventually and a whole bunch of other stuff. So the videos will be available to watch after. Um, okay. You missed a minute. Well, you had a very long time. All right. Let's do round five. Sorry, what? Okay. If you miss the submit on the last one, we can open it for a second. It's just going to be literally 10 seconds. And yes, we'll do the answer. Sorry. Yeah, I got you. Sorry, 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 sorry. All right. 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Meh. Do we get any new in? One in. <laughs> All right. I'm glad that worked out. Okay, let's do the qu the uh, answers for round four. Sorry, that's my fault. Uh, okay. Here they are. Larry. Uh, is who Amy wanted to take her to the prom. Uh, Xander says he wants to make her waffles. Uh, I forgot that question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Andrew tells Anya to think of a lake and candy canes. Uh, Warren escapes with a jetpack, which Andrew also tries to escape and runs into a ceiling. And Jonathan never got one. And the other Hellmouth is in Cleveland. And I'm sorry if some people don't get these answers, but watch more Buffy. All right. <laughs> Round five. <laughs> uh, okay. Round five. Okay. Question one of round five comes from uh, Larry Bagby. That's his name. Larry Bagby the third, who played Larry in seasons one, two, and three of Buffy. Uh, yeah, let's go. So Larry takes an interesting turn in the series. He goes from school bully to out and proud gay man. 
In fact, he's so out, he has a family member setting him up with guys. Which family member? Larry takes an interesting turn in the series from school bully to out and proud gay man. In fact, he's so out, he has a family member setting him up with guys. Which family member? All right. Number two. Oh, uh, we're back to Anthony Stewart head for one more question. Let's hear it. A hard one. It is hard, actually, because I thought it was something else. But anyway. When Willow becomes evil in season six, um, Alison was amazing in season six, Giles returns to Sunnydale with powers borrowed from a local British coven to fight her. And it says to little avail. I thought it was, that my entrance was... Pretty cool. Anyway, um, it actually worked, but it, the fight, I lose the fight. Uh, in which British county was this coven based? This is a really hard question. I know this one is hard, but it's said three times in that episode. Uh, when Willow becomes evil, Giles borrows the power of a coven to fight her to little avail. This coven was based in what English county? I know, I'm sorry, this one was hard, but it's in round five. All right. Uh, oh, we get Larry again. All right, Larry's back again. Uh, here comes Larry Bagby one more time. Okay, so Larry is first introduced in the second season episode, Halloween, where everybody in town buys cursed costumes that transform into that costume. What costume am I wearing in this episode? I'll give you a hint. All right. That one should have been easy. Larry is first introduced in the second season episode, Halloween, where everyone in town buys cursed costumes that transform them into that costume. What costume is he wearing in this episode? Yeah, that one was easy. See, you complain about the hard ones, but I get no praise for giving easy ones. I'm just saying. I like to balance it out. Let's go. <laughs> Number four. Uh, another one from Nicholas Brendan. Here we go. In season one's nightmares, the Scoobies are haunted by things they have nightmares about. Xander has three stated nightmares that manifest themselves. In addition to Nazis and being in his underwear in front of class, which subject of Xander's nightmares attacks him? In season one's nightmares, the Scoobies are haunted by the things they have nightmares about. Xander has three stated nightmares that manifest themselves. In addition to Nazis and being in his underwear in front of the class, what subject of Xander's nightmares attacks him? I forgot to be posting these. Let's see. Put in question two and three. Was that four? Mm -hmm. Yes, that was four. Okay, we're down to our last question. This has been so much fun. Um, thank you for everyone saying nice things. And I don't let the haters get me down for anyone saying bad things. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to round five. I'm sorry, question five. I'll get that right next time. Uh, we have a cameo from Joss Whedon. Again, here comes Joss. I've been known to make cameos in my shows, like Numfar of the Deathwalk Clan. In what episode did I play a radio announcer who pointed out financial discrepancies in the church caused by computer issues? So weird. Uh, Joss has been known to make cameos in some of his shows, like when he played Numfar of the Deathwalk Clan in Angel. In what episode does he play a radio announcer that points out financial discrepancies in the church caused by computer issues? It's a tough one. Let's do the questions one more time. Text only. Question one. Larry takes an interesting turn in the series from school bully to out and proud gay man. In fact, he's so out, he has a family member setting him up with guys. Which family member? Question two. 
When Willow became evil, Giles borrowed the powers of a coven to fight her to little avail. This coven was based in what English county? Question 3. Larry is first introduced in the second season episode Halloween, where everyone in town buys cursed costumes that transform them into that costume. What costume is Larry wearing in that episode? Que round 5, question 4. In season 1's Nightmares, the Scoobies are haunted by the things they have nightmares about. Xander has three stated nightmares that manifest themselves. In addition to Nazis and being in his underwear in front of the class, which subject of Xander's nightmares attacks him? And number five. Joss has been known to make cameos in some of his shows, like Numfar of the Deathlock Clan and Angel. In what episode does he play a radio announcer that points out financial discrepancies in the church charged by computer issues? Caused by computer issues, sorry. Uh, okay, so we'll give you a couple minutes to get those in. Um, I think they're all posted in the chat as well, so you can scroll back and see those. Uh, I want to give some thank yous before we close up here. Uh, first of all, Teresa Fortier, Nicholas Brendan, Sarah Allison for helping me get all of these wonderful people. Uh, my podcast co-host, Jewel Rocket Rose, has been amazing. Um, the... B -b 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 uh, oh, Jasco Games for donating these amazing board games. Uh, so cool, so cool. Um, direct Relief, I'm so happy to do things to help you guys, to support you, and it's been a blast. I do have one little announcement. Um, we're going to be doing this again in two weeks. We're going to be doing it at noon so the people in the UK can play, uh, and it's not one in the morning. Um, so we're going to do it in two weeks on May 30th at noon. And it will be a whole new lineup. So we want you to play again. I'll be putting it on our website. Uh, I'm sorry, on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Same as the feed you're on now. Um, yes, I'll send invites to everyone who bought a ticket here. And we will have a whole new lineup. I have some really cool people that have already agreed to do it. Uh, so yes. Um, we have 290 responses in. 292 so we'll give it a little bit longer again thank you guys so much for joining us thank you for donating to direct relief uh we've raised last i looked it was 2300 dollars um but it's probably more than that because i haven't looked in a while but it's at least two thousand dollars that we've raised for direct relief just through this and uh it's been amazing i thank you so much to the cast members who who agreed to be part of this and who shared it on their social media it's just the coolest thing in the world i'm watching the responses come in and trying to think of more people to thank uh <laughs> oh bj kramer my producer who is like the coolest person in the world for doing this he's been sitting here for five hours programming this fucking thing and we finally got it to work and i'm so happy uh, we have 315 responses in. I think we'll close in 10 seconds. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Let's close it in a moment. In a second. Any second now. 322 responses in on that one. Very good. Okay, um, let's do the answers for round five, and then we'll call it a night. Somebody has emailed me saying that I was wrong about the once more with feeling answer. Um, if I am, I'll fix it. We'll give you credit. So let's do it. Okay. Uh, question one. Uh, oh, yeah, that was that one. Uh, Larry has his grandma setting him up on dates. Question two, the Devon is county, the, uh, the county is Devon that the coven is in that Giles borrows the power from. Uh, question three, Larry dresses as a pirate. Uh, question four, Xander gets attacked by a clown. And question five, the episode in which he uh, plays a radio announcer is I, Robot, You, Jane. Uh, so thank you guys so much for playing. I will send the 
I put the answer in the wrong spot. Eh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I will send the answers out. I'm sorry, the uh, scores out tomorrow. Oh, my brain is fried. I'll send the scores out tomorrow by email, but first they'll be on our podcast, facebook.com slash gerardcast. I'm putting it in the, fee- in the uh, chat as well. Thank you guys so much for coming, and we'll see you next time. And now I can go.